I was on OkCupid when I got a message from a nice girl. She asked me how my day was, and I responded, being polite. I asked her how she was. After five minutes, I get this two-page response of how she was abused as a child, filled with graphic details, and how she's going through a PTSD episode at the moment. She also listed all of the screaming night terrors that she had within the last month, and the horrific nightmares too. I wasn't sure how to respond, so I just told her that I hope that she would feel better, but I wasn't the match for her. She messaged me later, telling me that no one ever wants damaged goods and that I was an ass. I don't think she took my rejection well at all. Tinder date with a famous chef where I was taken to a dive bar where he promptly started talking about how famous he was. We drank and watched sports. He proceeded to tell me, you're cute. And this eventually went to, I am going to make you bleed. He then invited one of his friends to come along. I went outside and he came up to kiss me. I was drunk, so I kissed back. Eventually, he proceeded to tell me how he was being charged with battering his ex-girlfriend, but he totally didn't do it. When it came time to pay the bill, he lost his wallet. Of course, I get stuck with it. I'll pay you back, he said. Needless to say, I never got a payment. Then he leaned up against me. I thought he was trying to kiss me again. But I looked down and he was peeing on me. In the street, peeing on me. I swiftly being too inebriated to drive, went and got myself a hotel room and a hot shower. Never again. This was on OKC, before I met my girlfriend. I had talked with a girl, and things were going well and we agreed to go on a date. Before the date, these were the physical attributes I was led to believe. She was short. She always had a joke about how short she was. She said she had a couple of small tattoos. She said she was skinny slash average weight. I go to pick her up, and the woman that answered the door was over six feet tall with full tattoo sleeves on both arms. Oh, and the worst part? She was busting at the seams, pregnant. Because I was so taken aback, I only said, what the fuck? She laughed and said, surprise. And her voice was really odd. I wouldn't even know how to explain it. Before the anger of being lied to set in, due to the absolute shock, she told me to come in. I sat down on the couch, and she yelled at her cats, who were literally just laying there, doing nothing. At this point, the shock had worn off, and I was thinking of an exit route. I mean, this bitch was fucking pregnant, and escaping on foot was my only chance. I pointed to the kitchen and asked about a piece hanging on the wall. She turned to look, and I ran out the front door. Met a guy in line, and we hit it off on our first date. A couple of weeks later, we had gone on four dates, and he knew where I lived. That's when it started getting weird. He wouldn't return my phone calls, so after a week, 
I stopped trying. Not long after, I glanced out the window of my house and saw him parked a couple houses down with another person in the car. I waited to see what he would do, and he drove off an hour later. A couple days later, he was back, except parked in a different location. I started to get freaked out. There was also a second person in the car that time. They left two hours later. The third time I saw his car outside, I was poised to call the cops. I didn't get a chance because there was a knock on the door. I opened it to a very pregnant girl on my front steps. She began to run. How could I date a guy with a girlfriend? Did I not have any morals? Who did I think I was trying to steal her man? I let her go on for a while before I interrupted her, told her I had no idea and asked why she was mad at me since I wasn't the one cheating on her. I found out that she forced him to drive to my house and sit outside nine different times. Nine. She wanted to see what I looked like and have him confront me and break it off but he wouldn't go up to my door. A friend of a friend met a girl online. They chatted for a while, and she made plans to visit him. When she got there, she was apparently a huge drag, boring, didn't want to do anything, and much heavier than her picture. They had nothing to talk about and he just counted the days until she left while sleeping on his couch. The day he thought she was supposed to leave, she confessed that she didn't have a return ticket. She thought she was going to move in with him. He called her mother to get her home, and her mom said that she didn't want her daughter back and offered him $50 to take her. He bought her a bus ticket and sent her back anyways. So hey guys, I've been lurking this up for like two years, and thanks to the wonders of online dating, I finally have quite the story to share with you. I use Tinder pretty frequently, and it's usually cool. Just meeting people, chilling, smoking with most of them. So I match with this dude named Charlie, and he seems cool. He's really cute and he plays music, which is really appealing to me, as I also sing and play piano. We walk for a little while, and I agree to meet him at his house. Mistake number one. Why did I think it was a good idea to meet a stranger in their home? I don't drive, so I take an Uber over, and it's a decent way away, so it's kinda pricey. When he buzzes me into the apartment complex, I got this really creepy vibe, but I shook it off as nerves. I go up to the third floor, and he's standing at the door. Things are cool, we're just chilling, we smoked a couple of bowls, and we're watching a movie. So he makes a move on me, and I go with it. We end up on the bed and we obviously engaging in adult activities when out of nowhere he wraps his hand around my neck. Hard. Now that's all fine and good with me. I mean, I can dig that in the right setting, but alone, in a stranger's house, when he didn't even check to me if it was okay, is not one of those things. So I literally can't breathe and I'm fairly certain I'm turning blue at this point, and he is just relentless. Not only is he asphyxiating me, he's also yelling in my face, are you scared? With this wild look in his eyes, and I'm like, fuck yes I'm scared, you're trying to kill me right now. I started to struggle, and he was gripping even harder. 
I'm not even kidding you guys. I seriously thought I was going to die. By some miracle, I wriggle out of his grasp and start screaming. He's yelling at me to calm down and I'm frantically trying to put on my clothes. He grabs my wrist and I am trying to leave and I use all of my strength to pull away and slam the door. As it was closing, the charming fella beat me a deal with the worst fucking cunt. I get home and I look in the mirror and I have hella bruises on my neck. I try to cover it up with makeup to no avail. I straight up look like I was almost strangled to death. Then he texts me, saying, I think you need more than one dick. And I'm like, oh really? You want to bring a friend and kill me together? How lovely. Anyways, I blocked him and reported him on Tinder. I wish I could have done more, because I seriously think he would have killed me. I've been debating going to the police, but the bruises are gone. And it's a he said, she said thing. But I'm really starting to wonder if I should. Because the next girl might not be so lucky. Zero out of ten would not attempted murder again. Crazy strangler tinder dude. Let's not meet. Got a single drink with a guy and declined a second. The date was perhaps an hour long. I'm not interested in more. As we exit the bar, it turns out we're walking in the same direction. Alas, out of nowhere, he puts his arm around me. I have no idea how to react. Resolve the problem by drifting to the right until his arm can no longer physically be around me. Eventually, I'm in arm's reach, so he does it again. There's a block to go to my place. I'm not sure what would be more awkward, removing his arm and walking together for a block, or enduring the arm. I endured the arm. We reach my street. I turn to go. He tries to kiss me, aggressively. I duck to avoid his lips and say, No, no, we're hugging, we're hugging. Then I flee. He calls out, So what do you think? I am fucking baffled as to how this is happening. Call back, I think I'm going home. I get a text message minutes later saying it was nice to meet me with a winky face. I respond with a polite message informing him I'm not interested. He sends me a slew of additional texts telling me if I'm feeling as passionate as he is, we should meet up back at the bar tonight. I text him back and tell him again I'm not interested, this time more firmly. Commence about eight months of texting and emailing by him, informing me that I'm ugly, need to lose 30 pounds, nobody will ever love me, and my personal favorite, I'm a graceless gargoyle, and on and on. It's all very amusing. Actually, once it's clear he's not going to escalate it to physical stalking, the only response I ever offer is a single, stop contacting me, or I'll involve the police. Eventually he slows down a bit, and I assume he's latched on to some other girl. Then a few months ago, he starts sending me love notes, tells me he wants to eat strawberries off my thigh, and take me to his love nest. He wants to be friends on Facebook, finds me on Flickr, tells me he's got a photographic memory for my bikini pictures. The last time he heard anything back from me was July 6, 2010. This month, he's offering to buy me lingerie. It was funnier when he hated me. Those were the good days. I met up with this guy I had been talking to a few weeks. 
tall, dark, and handsome, originally from Turkey, world traveler. Anyway, we meet up for sushi, and things are going great. Tons of stuff in common, and then it was like a fucking psycho switch flipped. He started talking about how now that we are going out, I couldn't wear nail polish before he got weirded out, holding hands with someone who wore nail polish and how he wanted to have a daughter but freeze her in time, so that she'd always be a daddy's girl and love him forever, and how when we got old, we'd have to have sex with the lights off since I'd be wrinkly and unattractive, and just went on and on. I literally just stared at him speechless and try to get through the date expecting, at the very least, a free meal. But no, no free meal. In fact, more expensive meal. This guy had the nerve to ask the waitress to split the check when he ordered twice what I had. We paid, I stormed out, and never talked to him again. I went out with a guy from OKC. It was going pretty well. We went out about four times and then decided for our next date we would try shrooms together because he always wanted to try it. I've done it plenty of times and assumed we would just have fun walking around this parade, but they ended up being very strong. He started having a religious experience and started writing about God and Sharpie all over my bathroom walls while reality is shattering around me and I start bawling my eyes out. In the morning, we painted my bathroom walls together. We never spoke again. Terrible experience, but I'm grateful for the story. And hey, at least he helped me paint my walls. Hey guys, long time lurker first time poster. Thought I'd tell a story about one of the more creepy encounters I've had so far. At the time it was a few months into undergrad in Austin and had just become comfortable enough with myself to come out of the closet. At the time, there were no dating apps available, so to find dates I used Greglist. Big mistake. I started chatting with a guy of Greg List, Greg, and we hit it off and decided to set a time and place for a date to meet in person. His ad said he was 27 and I was 18 at the time. At first, he was very insistent on meeting at his place, which I later found out was just a trailer, and it kind of made me suspicious but in his pictures he was very good looking and had a nice smile, so I decided to let it go. Eventually, we agreed to get coffee before going to his place. So the day arrived and I went to get coffee and I was pretty excited. I had showed my roommate pictures of Greg and talked about how I was looking forward to meeting him. I showed up at the coffee shop and he was already there. He actually did look like his pictures, so that was a good start. We got coffee and ended up chatting for several hours before he asked whether I wanted to go back to his place. Luckily, my roommate called to check up on me and it also happened that he was stranded because his car has broken down, so I told Greg that I would take my friend back home before heading over to his place. Well, by the time I picked up my friend, Greg was no longer answering his phone, texts or anything. When he finally answered, he accused me of making up some exclusive so I wouldn't have to go back to his place with him, and basically was very angry and annoyed despite our great conversation earlier. I was a bit bummed, but basically didn't think of him again. Until years later, when my old roommate sent me a link for a news article about Greg. Apparently, 
he had been running a sex trafficking ring, using underrated boys that he would lure through his good looks promises. I can only imagine what would have happened to me if I had gone back to his trailer with him that day. I know this isn't as creepy as other stories, but it definitely gave me the chills when I read the article. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I wanted to thank Creeks and Peaks for collaborating with me on this video. Please go and check her channel out. She has a lovely voice and great content. Don't forget to subscribe to her channel while you're there. Also, please don't forget to like and comment on this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you for your continued support. You all mean the world to me. All of our social media information will be in the description box below. And don't forget, I'll see you when the lights go out.